Hello everybody, this is Julie D from NordoniaHills.News and I have a special interview today. I am sitting, well not really sitting with, but I'm sitting and they're sitting. Uh, this is Gabe and his dad Michael. Hello. Hello. And um, mom Amanda is uh, probably waiting in the wings. <laughs> it may pop in at times. Um, oh, but Michael, can you tell the people that don't know the story about Gabe? So on June 6th, uh, we were having a little, you know, marshmallow fire in the backyard and we were cooking the hot dogs, marshmallows, all that. It was the end of the night, the fire was at Embers. Um, and do you want the version, sorry, from like how we saw it got down or what actually went down? So there's like a slight difference. But the actual day of it was just kind of a blur because Gabe came running in and the squad showed up and so. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, just, just tell everybody, you know, you don't have to go into details, but, you know, um, you know, people want to know, how, you know, what happened to Gabe and how he's doing. So, um, Gabe uh, wanted to see what would happen if you pour gas on a fire, and I was obviously the son of a fireman, um, I thought we had this conversation many times that it explodes, but Apparently he thought just it flamed up real big. So he wanted to keep the fire going for the night. You know, he's 12, like he's usually really, really good around that kind of stuff. I don't really have to worry much about Gabe with that kind of thing. So he didn't think he was doing anything bad. And uh, he poured the gas on the fire and unfortunately was standing over it and it flamed up. Everybody knows gas explodes um, and it got him pretty good. He came running around the corner. And at first I thought he just, uh, he's like, dad, I burned myself. And it looked like he just tripped in the fire really. He just it looked like a bad sunburn. So I'm like, all right, Gabe, let's go outside. You know, he's, it hurts, it hurts. You know, he's freaking out a little bit. Obviously as a dad, I'm angry and concerned. Uh, so I go, go outside, let's just, we'll hose you off. That'll stop, cool it off, we'll stop it. Uh, he lifted his arm up, you can just see the skin slough off from under his arm, on his flank. And I'm not gonna lie, my line of work, like you would think you, you could handle that, but when it's your own kid, you can't. Like, I just started panicking. I mean, I'm Amanda called call the squad, call the squad, you know, they showed up, I'm like, they're like, where do you want to take them? I'm like, take them to a Huja. And fortunately, Macedonia Fire, <laughs> uh, the one, you know, I know a couple of them, and, but one of them looked at me, and he's kind of like, uh, or Akron Children's, kind of like, yeah, like, this is a little more serious, not that a Huja's bad, but they're not equipped for it. Um, so, a Macedonia, I mean, they were on it, like, three squads showed up. I think, I think a fire truck showed up. Four or five of the sheriff officers, or from my memory, showed up. Like, the response was amazing. So, um, they did a great job. They got him down to Akron Children's. He was in Children's for two weeks. Um, those guys were phenomenal, too. Gabe got skin grafts um, on his ear. He took donor sight from his head here for his ear and down under his chin. You guys can't see it's his compression dressing, sorry. And then they took a sight from his leg down here. It's all underneath his arm. He has this on, sorry. We can't show you guys because right now he's got stuff on it. And he's That's got okay. Wrap <laughs> all along here, so. It itches, though. Yeah, it itches him a lot. You can get a oh, bad. So. Well, you know, if anything, it's a it's a lesson, you know, for others. Absolutely. I mean, accidents happen, you know. It really, that's it, really what it was. It definitely could have been worse, and we're lucky. Well, we're glad Gabe is doing great. So, um, tell me about the. Obviously, he was in the hospital for quite a long time. Tell us what that was about. You know what, uh, what that was like. That was very arduous for us. Um, not, the hospital was amazing, but uh, Gabe's one of seven children. Um, so. Obviously, mom would not leave his side. I mean, Amanda stayed there literally every day for two weeks straight. You'd come home, check in on the family, uh, make sure I didn't burn the house down, <laughs> and she would go back to the hospital and spend the rest of the night with Gabe. So it was it was hard because I could wake up in the morning, get everybody ready and move in, tell the uh, our oldest child who's 18, 19 rather, you know, okay, I'm leaving because you know he's got his things he's doing for school and work. I go down there, check on Gabe, grab mom, bring her home. She could shower, spend time with the kids and the family, play with the dogs, and then maybe we'd eat dinner together if we could and pack her back up, drive her back down there. Um, I definitely got to say, so I don't forget, it definitely wouldn't have been as easy if it weren't for like the neighbors and the friends and the relatives and the strangers that 
they brought us food and they checked on the kids and they brought them snacks and that's one of the reasons we didn't leave this community like about a year ago we were looking to move and we looked everywhere i can think of and we sat down and decided like we need to stay here and this is one of the exact reasons i'm glad we did because the city rallies all the time so um, um um which uh, city do you live in here i know you're here in town yes we live in northfield center uh we moved to northfield village but my parents have lived here my entire life so um I, amanda's mad at me because i dragged her in from uh for pike into our little nordonia community but even she sees the benefit of it yeah, seven kids. I, I'm one of, I'm youngest of six, and I have four of my own. So, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's different, you know, when you have like, I guess maybe like more than two is when it starts. Oh, once you run out of arms to grab them, yeah. Right. Two. Right. <laughs> um, so, um, Gabe, what was the, the best thing about all of this that happened? Uh, that I survived yeah that is that is way up there i would say for sure i yeah, heard a woman happy that you're doing well me and she died because she put gasoline on her shoes and a candle caught on fire a candle caught them on fire and she died so i'm kind of glad that i got burned on my entire body and i survived and from what i understand it's difficult for you because you're an outdoor kid and you can't be outside right now is that true yes yeah, that's that's sad. Um, well, tell us some of the great things uh, that people have been doing. I, I know you mentioned um, food and snacks and stuff. Have, um, oh, that's right. Um, we should talk about the event coming up in August. I don't know about it. So, um, sorry, I have ADD, so once in a while I lose my train of thought. <laughs> happens to me all the time. <laughs> Sorry, Mama decided to stop yeah. in here and say hi. Over. That's fine. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Just the hair. So the event in August is on Friday the 14th. It's going to start at 5 and go until 11 p.m. There is going to be a 50-50 raffle. We have some really awesome um, gift baskets for our Chinese raffle. We're gonna do sideboards. Um, it's gonna be like cookout style, so it's gonna be outside. Um, we're gonna have masks available, hand sanitizer. Tables are gonna be spaced apart so everybody can keep their social distancing. Um, and you know, it's gonna be hamburgers and hot dogs, chips, um, soda. People can uh, purchase beer or cider if they'd like, um, or they can bring their own, whichever they prefer. Uh, it's gonna be at the VFW on Old Eight here just actually right down the road from us. And uh, we're gonna have a nice, it's gonna be kid friendly. There's gonna be a little bounce house there. We've got some princesses and- uh, Avengers. Yeah, a superhero and Star Wars character coming to like help entertain the kids. We're working on a balloon bender to be there. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's, we're really, yeah, I just mentioned the princess as well. <laughs> it's going to, um, I think, be a, a nice time. I'm sorry. Um, you know, especially it'll give everybody a chance to get out, get some fresh air, and see each other at a distance, obviously. But, um, no, no. no, you're fine. You can just move. Um, so that is uh, the event. We're hoping that, obviously, to make it a success, we do have. Hard tickets if people want to purchase them. I'm actually picking those up tomorrow. Um, or there is a Cheddar Up link on the Facebook um, event that people can purchase tickets through Cheddar Up if they prefer. Yeah, I will put links in the description of the video and and Perfect. and so people will know what we're talking about. Awesome, thank you. Also, are you looking for um, more raffle items if people you know would like to oh, donate? Okay. Things the guests we will all, we will always be happy to take more raffle items, but we're trying to put together a booze wagon. Um, so that's one of the biggest things that we're looking for right now is for people that are, would maybe be willing to donate like a bottle of liquor to the booze wagon um, because those are very popular. <laughs> um, and uh, we already have the wagon; we just need the stuff to fill it. So that's well, it seems be. an important part that's needed. 
I mean, I'm sure somebody would want the wagon because it's pretty cool, but. <laughs> so <laughs> if they win, do they get the wagon too? Uh-huh, they get everything. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'll yeah. take the wagon. Someone can have the booth. <laughs> <laughs> that would be me too. I'd be like, you know what? I'm sure I'd have a lot of friends then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> People would be following you home like, oh, let me help you load that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That is for sure. Um, and uh, tickets, uh, I'm looking at my notes here. Tickets are $12. Kids are six dollars, and if people don't want to attend, they can uh, pick up and take it home. Yes, anybody that doesn't doesn't Yay! either have the time feel comfortable. Mm. By all means, they can come by and grab a to-go meal. Um, we'll have Absolutely. that available for people as well, because we want to give everybody options. Because we know that there's people out there and they want to support, but obviously, we're in a different time right now, and again, unfortunately, course. nobody really knows what's going on from one day to the next. So we're trying to make it as all-inclusive as possible. Yeah, speaking of that, um, how was it in the hospital um, because of COVID? Was there, was there um, anything, any different protocols for you? It was a lot of different. He was not allowed to have any visitors. Um, the only two people that were allowed to even come in to the hospital was myself and his father. Um, that was it. Like once you had your two visitors set, that was all that was allowed to come in the entire time he was there. Um, you weren't even allowed Sorry, to like dude. walk around the halls and like, Sorry, keep I mean, like you could out. go, like if you wanted to go outside, obviously you could go outside, but like you couldn't just simply go for a walk and, you know, get your mind off of things or what have you. You could like, make yeah. And we, my brother had come into town. Actually, he wanted to see Gabe when he heard he got hurt. He lives in Philadelphia. So that's a seven hour drive. And the doctor was actually really, really nice. He made arrangements for Gabe to be able to come outside. Um, they have like a picnic area and it has a very nice shaded spot. So Gabe was allowed to come outside and visit with his uncle for about 10, 15 minutes. And uh, then he had to go back in. But yeah, other than that, that was the only, and, and he didn't at first understand that he couldn't have visitors. Um, sure. You know, that was, like, at first he thought nobody was coming to see him, and it made him sad. Oh. And then he's like, you know, no, unfortunately, buddy, they, they can't come to see you. And even he understood, but it was lonely. It was very lonely, just sitting there all day with not too much to do, so. And they're probably not allowed to do some of the other activities that they used to do at the hospital for kids. Right. The, the only thing they could really do for him activity wise was they brought in an Xbox for him to play. Which, he was fine with. Yeah, which he was fine with that. That's like yeah. his, his favorite thing. Because yeah, um, he doesn't get to play that many video games normally at home. So he was like gay in his glory with that. But it was a One X. Yeah, Xbox One X. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Xbox One X or is it X? I don't know. I, X. I don't know I, either. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but they, and they were very sweet. I mean, they tried to do everything that they could think of to make his stay as comfortable as possible. I, I could not say enough good things about African Children's Hospital. They were phenomenal. And then I, I've had either myself or family members that have been admitted to probably every major hospital in the area at some point. Sure. And I, they are just incredible. They outshine everyone. It's, it was just, we're very blessed to have such a wonderful hospital system so close to home that he was able to go to. They took very good care of him. How long um, was he in there? 15 days. Two weeks to two weeks. Yeah. No, 15 days to get back. Two weeks and one day. Yeah. Two weeks and one day. You were right, Gabe. That's right. It, um, I guess it's probably obviously glad to have him back, um, but there's future surgeries in his future? Um, because the skin grafts are basically scar tissue, they will only stretch so much as he grows. Mm -hmm. So every time, whether it's gaining weight or just growing from childhood, um, he will have to have additional surgeries. Almost his entire life, it really depends on where he stops growing. Like, if he's a very, very bean pole child right now, so he's super, super skinny. So, I mean, even as he, you know, becomes an adult, as he puts on more weight, hopefully, um, 
he'll need grafts for that to help expand his skin. Um, so it is something that's gonna, like I said, follow him pretty much forever as his body changes. Um, you get getting, getting tired, buddy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he, we're we're looking at a lot of care for the years to come with this. Well, you know, I'm glad um, that you guys didn't move out of town because uh, this is a great community. Amazing community, absolutely phenomenal. There's the people that have rallied behind us. It's just, it's I'm in awe. I really truly am. I mean, there's people that I've never even met before that have mm -hmm. stepped up and they're contacting me, you know, through Facebook and checking in Gabe and, you know, asking if the family needs anything. I mean, just completely amazed. You know, is, Facebook gets a bad rap, but um, it's also really good for good things too. It really is. It really truly is. I mean, and it, it helps him feel better too, just knowing that there's people out there. Like I've had some of um, like his aides from school that have contacted me through Facebook and to check on him. So it, it helps brighten his spirits that, you know, his teachers and things are checking in on him and want to see how he's doing. So that's definitely helped. And like I said, the whole district, the whole Nordonia Hills area has just been incredible. All the support that we have received. Which school does the Gabe go to? He will be going into the middle school this year. Yeah, and obviously we don't know what's going to happen with the school. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, things are definitely up in air. And I, I kind of, I said to a friend the other day, I go, this might be a blessing in disguise because with all of the doctor's appointments that he'll have to have this next year, you know, he won't necessarily, if, if for some reason he, we decide to keep him home or then all the other kids home, that at least we won't have to worry about pulling him out of school for all these appointments and him missing all that time. Um, but it's something we're taking day by day. I think like everybody else is. Everybody is in the same boat for, for that about school, for sure. That's all we can do is just like everybody I talk to, nobody knows what they're doing yet. So makes me feel a little bit better about not having made a decision that every, we were all there. Like you said, we're all in the same boat with it. And right. Gabe, is there anything that you wanted to say to people? Um, I would like for all those people that are supporting uh, me online to probably come to the, what was the thing, August? August 14th. August 14th. Yeah, the, to come to the celebration on August 14th and make sure that if kids have a question with like what to do with fire, that they should either one, ask their parents or two, look it up or at least watch a video. And I just really hope that uh, the people that support me come to celebration so that way I can thank them in person. Well, thank you. That was very nice. It was very nice uh, for you to say that. I know this has been difficult for you and your family, but what a great time to pull together. Um, yeah. I appreciate it. Huh? Yeah. Is there anything else, Amanda, that you wanted to say? Um, I would just also like to put a huge thank you out there. I mean, thank you to me just doesn't seem like enough, but. Well, you know, it, it makes the community feel good to have, you know, a family to help as well. So they get something from it too. And, and just we appreciate it so much. Well, we, we appreciate you and, you know, um, good luck to your family. And, you know, hopefully I'll be able to make the event um because i think that would be that would be a good thing for people to see we need good news right yes <laughs> we definitely need good news we need we need to see people helping and you know that's that's definitely a a good thing that's come of this so um thank you for taking the time to talk to us oh thank you for having us we appreciate it well i hope you have a great day and have a great summer gabe as best you can. <laughs> We're working on it, huh, buddy? Mm -hmm. He's got some some things to keep him distracted. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know, buddy. I'm here. Well, thank you very much, and uh, everybody. I'm sure at this point, giving you guys a virtual hug. Yes, definitely. <laughs> we we appreciate those <laughs> very much. 
Uh, take care. Um, any other comments or anything else that you want us to share out, just let me know. We'll do. I have my email address now. Thank you. No problem. You have a great weekend. Well, wait, it's Monday. Well, have a great week. No. <laughs> I thought it was Friday. I, thought it was, I thought it was Friday too. I never know what day it is. I really I, don't. I, I'm the same exact way. I look at a calendar and I'm like, oh, wait, today's Tuesday? What are you talking about? Yeah. Hard yeah, I think there's a lot of people not knowing what day it is, especially since, you know, we work from home and things are so different now. Yeah, everything just runs together. Yeah, absolutely. Well, <laughs> take care. Stay in touch. We will. Nice to see you, bye, Kate. Bye. Bye.